it's a question that's been in my mind for, for years. When I came out of the Jehovah's Witnesses organization, at least mentally, I started envying the so-called born-again Christians because they seemed to have something that we did not. For years, my ministry as a Jehovah's Witness, I was to some extent certain that we did have Jehovah's Spirit. We would see the Jehovah's Spirit or God's Spirit and um, the way he helped us to go preaching from door to door in the way he would um, help us understand what does the Bible teach. It would help us to cope with some personal issues, to stay away from immorality. And I cannot say that God's Spirit was not there. When I look back now, it will be wicked of me to say that there was no God's Spirit and too presumptuous and even too proud and too negative. However, However, perspective, Jehovah's Witnesses put God's Spirit in, the, the way they view it is actually making God's Spirit. You cannot, for example, have the understanding of the Bible by Holy Spirit only. If you read the Bible and pray for Holy Spirit and come to one conclusion that is different from the way it was described or explained in the publication of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, that was not God's spirit. One of the disfellowshipping offenses is the following. You can find it uh, online, Shepherding Book, chapter 5, paragraph 16, speaks about apostasy. Apostasy is standing away from true worship, a falling away, defection, rebellion, abandonment. It includes the following. And down below it says, deliberately spreading teachings contrary to Bible truth as taught by Jehovah's Witnesses. In other words, Jehovah's Witnesses have the truth and only they have the truth. If you, by reading your Bible, come to a conclusion that's different from the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, you're an apostate. You didn't do it with the help of the Holy Spirit, but rather the spirit of as the scriptures there say, the Antichrist. So, so Jehovah's Witnesses do believe in God's Spirit, but they, in other words, believe that the Holy Spirit is using Jehovah's organization to fulfill its activities. In other words, they make Jehovah's or God's Spirit impotent only to uh, make the organization stand out. It's visible, uh, famous, or better to say infamous, baptismal questions. The first question is, on the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, have you repented of your sins and dedicated yourself to Jehovah to do his will? Okay, that's basically what the Bible teaches. The second is, do you understand that your dedication and baptism identify you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses? in association with God's Spirit-directed organization. So, Jehovah has the organization that's directed by God's Spirit. If you avoid the channel God is using, you don't have God's Spirit. That's what they claim. Once Jehovah's Witnesses become ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and realize that they've been, people have been telling them lies, they still stay in a vacuum, like an airtight space. How can we recognize Holy Spirit? In my former congregation, this was the most used uh, reason for disfellowshipping anyone. When all others, other proofs failed, then two elders or three elders would visit, pay a friendly visit to a person, their brother, and they would make him angry, and he would start shouting, and then they would say, oh, you're not obeying Jehovah's arrangement. You see, we are appointed by Holy Spirit, and we are elders because the Holy Spirit put us here. 
and you are defying Jehovah's arrangement and it's, you're an apostate. And some, unfortunately, have lost their health and they have lost everything they had because the uh, Spanish Inquisition-like elders visited them with this line in their, in their shepherding, shepherding book. So it's a very typical example of double thing. And that's how they rule over, over, their, over their flock. So this is the quote from George Orwell. If one is to rule and to continue ruling, one must be able to dislocate the sense of reality. For the secret of rulership is to combine a belief in one's own infallibility with the power to learn from past mistakes. This is the purpose of Jehovah's Witnesses, with their fallible, infallible governing body, with their inspired, spirit-directed brethren. They make all things come together. This creates this mental confusion, and people who are part of the flock become disoriented, and it's very, they're an easy prey to the men who then introduce false teachings. And by introducing false teachings, they take people after them. They make them their own disciples. So the organization becomes Holy Spirit. I believe this is the, the sin against Holy Spirit. What they do to Holy Spirit, they make it invalid by introducing themselves instead of the Holy Spirit. Do we or don't we have Holy Spirit. How can we tell that we have Holy Spirit? I was dealing with this question personally for a long time, and a couple of days ago, I had a close encounter with a born again Christian. And first, I envied uh, the person because she spoke in tongues and she had this passionate expressions about Jesus, about, about God. But then I remembered my very first experience with reading the Bible. I remember the first time I was reading the book of Matthew, it was even before I started, I started studying with Jehovah's Witnesses. And I remembered the moment, and I could feel it even physically, the moment when I realized that Jesus exists and that his words are true. I will never forget that moment, even when I was asked those questions prior to my baptism, when uh, the brother there asked me if I believe in Jesus Christ. I remembered that thing to happen, that happened to me in the past, and I said, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, because I felt him physically. But how did I feel him? I felt him when I was reading his words. And this is exactly what Jesus himself said would happen. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Without his words, you cannot have spirit. So that's what happened to me back then, long, long time ago, more than 20 years ago. I developed faith in Jesus without the help of any organization. So it kind of anchored me to say to that person, the born-again Christian, no, I do believe in Jesus. However, there's one other Bible verse that we should take into, into account. How can we know that we have really God's Spirit and that we're not being misled by someone? So it's 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many prophets have gone out into the world. The Bible warns us it's the time, uh, the time of writing of this, this letter was uh, the time when false teaching started affecting Christians back then. So John was in a situation that was somewhat similar to the situation we are now in. There's so many different beliefs, so many different approaches, born again Christians, uh, gifts of prophecy, gifts of tongues, especially tongues. How can we know if those spirits are true? Are the miracles true? Are those charismatic gifts really of God? By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Some of the false teachers back then, they were called the Gnostics. They believed that 
Jesus was just an appearance that everything material is negative, and Jesus, in order to be uh, divine, had to be a spirit, or at least not human, but this is, in plain language, this is what John meant. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, he was in the flesh. He was a human being. Every teaching, every spirit that says that Jesus Christ was not a human being was not, is not from God. So it's not 100, he's not 100% God or 100% human. an angel dash human dash angel he's 100 percent flesh and blood he's 100 percent human and that's how we can tell that the spirit we have is from god and it's very encouraging to know that that experience gives you peace of mind gives you stability gives you hope gives you courage it's tangible and reachable and very special experience to have the God, have God's spirit makes you very, very uh, enthusiastic. However, stays within the framework of Jesus' words. Through those test phrases, you can always remain secure that the spirit that's motivating you to do God's will is truly God's spirit.